and and there was this one time where it was um it was basically uh king of the mountain um so the winner stays so oh, yeah you know, i love that so so the winner stays and i was put with uh five other guys five six other guys and they were all black belts and all of them were on the national team yeah you know Mom and was eliminated the first one hmm? Home and, and was the first guy to go out. I'm, I'm the brown belt. So the thing, and it was also the coach. So he's a two-time Olympian. Yeah. And then you have all the yeah. national team members. <laughs> and they're all heavier oh. than me. And one of the guys was lighter, but I mean, he's also like, he was also on the national team and all that. So the thing is, I come in first round, I get taken out in like two seconds. Oh, man. And then I'm sitting, so I have to wait my turn. So there's like, like four or five other guys before me. So I got to wait my turn, but these guys, when they're fighting, because they're, they're, they're highly skilled and they're, they're more or less evenly it matched. Time. It takes time. It takes them like two, three minutes before they get an epon. And then, so I have to wait for, I have to wait like 10, 15 minutes to get another round in. And that by, by that time I get my second round and I'm out in like 10 seconds again. Oh man. So I'm yeah. sitting there, I'm, I'm getting discouraged because I'm thinking to myself, I can't even practice. <laughs> I, I, cause yeah. I can't last. I can't, I can't, I can't take any of these guys down. So I never stay in the middle. So it's King of the mountain. So I'm always out. Yeah. And then I got to wait like another 10 minutes. So this is like absolutely useless, you know? And I think my, my, um, my coach noticed that, that I wasn't getting practice and I was lighter than everybody. So he started putting me with, um, uh, you know, guys who were more that were about my size or lighter, but who were less experienced. So then at least I could, I could, uh, I could roll more and, and have more more practice and I could develop my skills. So now when I look at the, when I look, when he divides the group, I'm actually happy that I'm with the guys like at my level or a little bit lower so I could actually practice. Yeah. Um, my experience is like the two groups um, that are above your rank that can teach you are two. Uh, first one is advanced women because um, they can rely more on technique. They can rely more on technique. And at the same time, they're not gonna give you a very hard time because they're not gonna be as strong as you are. So you can mentally let go of the strength aspect and really work on your moving. And they're gonna be doing that to you because they're gonna keep moving. They're gonna see you as a man, even though you're uh, ranked below them or whatever, they're gonna keep moving you and you're gonna do the same. And back in your head, you're gonna be like, I'm all technique because I don't need to use strength or force my technique. So that can teach you a lot about your technique, how you do it, how you angle yourself, etc. And at the same time, they're not going to give you an easy time because as I said, they're advanced. Even though they're a woman, they're going to be advanced and they're going to give you a hard time. But at the same time, you can know if you are using strength or at the same time, you know, I'm I'm really crafting my technique. So you can go for an ipon. You can get something done and learn something about yourself. And they can also teach you. They can tell you like, hey, you know, do this, do that, or you know, try using the sleeve in this way. They, they have something to tell you. Um, but uh, in terms of like strength aspect, uh, et cetera, they can, uh, they can show you, they can really tell you a lot about yourself. And the second uh, uh, group that can teach you is the old veterans. You know, they beat up their bodies. They know their bodies. Um, they're not going to use strength as well because they, they're far more about energy efficiency. Um, you can, you know, move with them like a, an advanced woman. And at the same time, they have a lot to show you and teach you because they don't care about competition. They're not there to train for competition. They competed. And at the same time, they have a lot of, they have decades of wisdom to tell you. I'd say these are the two groups that I've learned most from. You know, that's, that's, that makes a lot of sense. That's very invaluable because I'm thinking about it now. Um, and I've had experience uh, uh, sparring with uh, women who are much, who were on the national team. Yeah. And of course, like, because they're women and because I'm, I'm able to control myself, I'm not going to use strength. You know, I'm going to use pure technique to try to outmaneuver them and i'll yeah. grip them and, and so on and even in my in my gripping exchange i'm not going to use too much strength you know like I, I gauge it so that it's 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 more or less even and what i've noticed is that um 
because I don't have to worry, like you said, about, you know, like getting uh, about the strength aspect of it. I know she's not going to dominate me in strength, so I can kind of let loose and really focus on technique and try to figure things out. And it, it's, it's crazy because I remember after, um, after fighting with uh, those more advanced uh, uh, women who are, you know, black belt national team and all that, I realized that, oh man, like if we were the same size, they would have, they would have whipped my ass big time. But I was yeah. able to manage a little bit more because, uh, you know, because I have a little bit more strength, you know, so I could kind of resist some of their attacks, even though I wasn't really trying to resist all that much, but I was still able to get away with stuff because of my, you know, just because I'm, I'm a little bit bigger and stronger. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a good point right there. But the veterans, I could see that being beneficial too. like um, veterans who they're not out to just smash you, you know, and they're a little bit, um, they're more about timing, technique. And they could guide you along the way. They could kind of correct you while you're, uh, while yeah. you're doing things. They don't care. They don't have competition. Like for example, I went. Uh, we, here we have what is called uh, uh, Institute Judo or Judo Institute. Um, it's usually like a big open space, and it's like high level, high, 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 highest level. Mm -hmm. And no one's gonna spar with you. Like they have competitions. So they see you a colored belt. They're gonna, they're not gonna even look at you. So uh, if you do this. No one's going to come to you. No one. So who's going to come and say, hey, let's train? It's the veterans. So it's the, the pace is very easy going. Uh, they're going to they're gonna counter you and they're going to fall down quite a few times because, again, they're going to beat you with experience. But um, the pace is very good for your level. Um, you can learn to let loose. Um, you can train your technique. And they will give you a lot of good pointers. Yeah, and I think you actually advance better that way because if you always train with people who are going to smash you into oblivion, what are you really learning? You know, you're no. learning absolutely nothing. You know, you got to get discouraged. Advance. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you get discouraged too. And there's no fun in that. And of course, you're, you know, like you're taking damage, like, like it or not. Like the fact of falling all the time, like when you're young, it's fine. But me, like I have... Um, I have like shoulder issues, knee issues now and lower back issues uh, because of judo and because of BJJ also. But I mean, judo is it's a, it's another level of of um, of injuries and all that to say that it, if you get thrown all the time. Like it gets uh, not only does it get demoralizing and you don't learn anything, but your body's taking a beating and, and it, there's wear and tear in your joints because of that. So you're better off sometimes, like you said, just training with the veterans training with yeah. women who are more advanced. I think that's actually a very smart approach for people who are um, starting judo later in life. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, we have in my club, we have like the competition uh, group, which is like high, high level, like uh, first division, even Grand Prix, Grand Slam. Ooh. And we have the um, recreational, which is like the half of them is black belts, and their 40s, they have families, they don't care. They just do two, judo two times a week. You just come in and have fun. And I learned from them way more and you become friends with them way easier. You know, it's a funny thing because here, you know, when you go to, um, um, if you go to the, na the National Center, like the, uh, here it's called the INS. So that's like where- the EG? Hmm? Like the, the Institute? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like if you're a brown belt, you're allowed to go there on, I think it's, it's, it's Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays for, for sparring. I think it's Thursdays, but if you go there, it's all the national team guys, <clears throat> you're allowed to be there, but it's exactly like you said, if you go like this, when it's time, no one's they're, they're you know, they're not gonna, they're gonna ignore you essentially because to them, you're like a waste of time. Yeah. Like you're literally a waste of time because then they're, uh, you know, it's, I'm not, um, I could understand where they're coming from. Do I agree with it a hundred percent? Not really, you know, but, uh, but I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get on the national team. They're competing for, and they're trying to improve themselves. So to them, like, you know, going with you, who's not uh, a prospect or somebody they're going to compete against or whatever, then it's, you know, so yeah. And these guys, they, they totally ignore you. It's, it's crazy the way it works, but they don't, um, you could ask anybody. And, and usually, like you said, the ones that are actually like, take you on will be like the veterans yeah and this is not from my own experience but this is from people who've been there and uh who've told me what it's all about they're like because you know i asked them 
I remember asking my coach, yeah, should we go to the national center? He's like, honestly, no one's going to want to spar with you. You know, even he said, even me, they don't want to spar with me. You know, some of them do, but you know, most people, yeah. won't. you know, and they all look at you funny too. So it's kind of like weird. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not a nice feeling. Uh, but uh, unfor- unfortunately, when I went there, like there was a lot of uh, veterans and they were very, very nice. And uh, like, I'm, I, I'm thinking like when things go back to normal, I would go there to spar with the veterans. 